Yes. When we look at the lives of the Yambia who came before Rasulullah Wasallam and earthly life and their ummas, it seems Ashura was always a day of deliverance for them. For Noah, for Adam, for Musa. And yet for the most beloved and his family, it was in many ways a day of tragedy. Can you explain this? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When you sacrifice for the sake of Huck, you call yourself a tragedy? Hmm. Right off the bat is wrong idea. Hmm. Do you call those ones who became shaheed, that they die for the sake of Allah, for Huck, do you call them tragic characters? Like they are sorry that they are weak, showing that they are so weak, this asking from them. They've been killing you for hunting you down all day and you're asking from them. You understand? Does that make sense? No. Just as those ones, they are saying, oh, he is Lord. We put him, we hang him on the cross. Yet he's saying, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? That is tragic. That is tragic. Yes, it is a day of forgiveness. It is a day of being delivered. From Adam alayhi salam to Nuh alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Idris alayhi salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam, it's always a day where the mistakes that were made either by the, by the Ummah, of course, we're not going to say the Prophets they make mistakes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing forgiveness to them and delivering them from that. But understand that this day of delivery always came when? When? Huh? After the punishment. Correct or no? after the punishment. After certain things were not right that were committed. Can we say the Ahlul Bayt they committed anything that was not right? Hasha stuff. They did not. Huh? Can we say those ones that is in the Ummat they committed wrong things? Yes we can. They did. You think them, they knowing the understanding, the mercy of Allah, they're going to ask, is it, does it fit into an Ahlul Bayt to be asking for revenge? No, it doesn't. On the day of judgment, Ibn Allah saying, Hazrat Fatima will approach the Holy Prophet with a cup filled with the blood of a son. And the Prophet will look at her and say, Ya Fatima, today is the day of mercy and intercession, not the day for vengeance. <laughs> Did the Prophet wasalam, show vengeance when the day that he conquered Mecca? Did he keep tabs of who did what and finding every way now to take revenge? Never. That is the characteristic. That is a divine characteristic. Mistakes were made in the earlier nations. Punishment came to them. Adam salam, he stood on one foot for 300 years on the mountain of Serendib in Sri Lanka. At that time, the earth was different as it is now. This is before the flood. And his head was reaching up to the first paradises. And he was crying for 300 years, punishing himself, crying. He was crying because he was separated from his Lord. Hawana was also crying. She was in uh, Jeddah area. 
She was crying, but she was crying because she was separated from Adam alayhi salam. And Adam alayhi salam wasn't crying because he was separated from her. He was crying because he was separated from his Lord. She was part of him. You understand? And Allah forgave. After 300 years, he was standing up on one foot asking for forgiveness. Only then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave. And why, when? I'm taking just one example to show what it means, the deliverance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we talk about Nuh alayhi salam too is after heavy punishment. The whole world perished. Whole world perished. That flood was like acid. It burned everyone. Except for that handful in that ship. Couple of exceptions here and there. Allah showing his power that he makes the law and he can break the law as he likes. But everything happened after punishment. The sea was split for Musa salam. But were the Bani Israel punished? They were punished. For 300 years, no? 200, 300 years they were under slavery. They were punished. So when you look at every area, every situation, there was heavy punishment that came. And Adam alayhi salam, he was crying so much that the angels, when they hear him, because he was reaching up to the first paradises, they started crying too because they love him. And they cannot do their work. And Allah is making him now to grow shorter and shorter and shorter. You understand? So now, where is the punishment that came to the nation? Because they are shedding that holy blood. Isn't that exceptional? What was that punishment? Was there any punishment? Was there any punishment as we see that it had happened to the nation of Nuh? It happened to the prophets and their people and the nations after that. No. When you look at it with these eyes too, it's as if, just as you say, oh, it's a tragedy. Just as you say, oh, they failed. Just as you say, okay. Now, it's not, Huck didn't win. It lost. And if anything, yes, it won for that day. With these eyes. Not with these eyes. Correct? Was there any punishment? There was enough punishment now, not just for Yazid and his army, for the whole of mankind to be punished because of that. But their grandfather was Rahmat Ali was the mercy to the universes. And if you carry one drop of that blood of being a mercy to the universes, you will not run for revenge. You're going to run to say, forgive them, Ya Rabbi. As Abba Yazid Bistami is saying, on the day of judgment, if my Lord, just by my Lord saying, Ya Abba Yazid, come, it says, just him addressing me is going to fill my heart with so much love that I wish that he will stretch Bayazid and he will cover the doors of Jahannam so that no single person from the Ummat is going to enter into Jahannam just from that love. Uh, what is that showing? His sacrifice. When the moth is driven to the flame, it burns. Is that tragedy? No, it's not. That is the logical ending of the life of the moth that is in love with the flame. As the Holy Prophet ﷺ, was he martyred? Yes, he was poisoned. As Hazrat Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, was he martyred? Yes, he had also had poison in reality. As Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali. Hazrat Hassan, was he martyred? Yes, he was betrayed by his wife and he was poisoned. And Hazrat Hussein went through the same. Because to achieve that level of what? Shahid. Is that a tragedy? 
No, it is the highest honor. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Holy Prophet is saying that one who dies for the sake of Allah, he fights for the sake of Allah and he dies. Azrael will not take his soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself will take his spirit. And just from that pleasure of Allah taking that spirit, that one will wish that his life be returned to him, that he die again for Allah to take, and again for Allah to take, again for, he doesn't want paradise, he doesn't want anything, just that pleasure that Allah is taking his life forever. But with his eyes, you see, they all led very tragic lives. This is the thing. Who is in charge? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understand? And the Ummah has been delivered. Otherwise, through the transgressions, the wrongdoings of this Ummah, from that time until now, it is enough reason for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy all of us again and again and again and again. Especially in this Ahir Zaman. This Ummat is taking all the wrongdoings of all 124,000 Prophets, Ummats, all the wrong things that they are doing, that they are punished for, that one wrong thing that they are doing. Some nations, one wrong thing they did was they play with the scales. They do bad business and Allah cursed them for that. Like taking all these wrong actions and taking it in these last days without the Hilafat, last hundred years only especially, that you're doing it at the same time all together and you don't have the voices of truth of Haq to stand up and say this is wrong. That the system of Dajjal has completely taken over. So, showing us again, when that tyranny comes, what do we do? What did Holy Prophet Salam do? He made the Hijrah. Ah, what did the people, the Ahlil Kaf, they do? They fought that if you read Surah Al Kaf, it will prepare you for Ahir Zaman, it will protect you against the Dajjal. This is Hadith Sharif to read Surah Al Kaf every Friday. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, like this, like that, we're doing it here. And it's explaining, showing how the Ahlil Kaf, when they are, they are youth, they are young people like you. They're looking around, everyone is doing wrong things. They say, how are we going to stand up? We just have to go to the mountain. Escape. You think their parents are not going to say, why are you doing that? That is so stupid. You think their friends are not going to say them? You think everyone around them is not going to try to stop them? Saying, you are a young person, what, are you going to raise your children without this and without that, without all these kinds of things that you're going to get outside up in the mountain. They went through that. But for the sake of Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a holy prophet is saying Allah praises, Allah praises the youth who in their young lives, they're running after Allah. Not when you're old. You're young. Not when you finish all your battery and you have nothing else to do, you did everything. Then you say, okay, let me sit down now. No, when you realize way before that. Allah is praising those ones. So yeah, to make the hijrah. You say, lakum dinukum waliyatin. You say, I'm not going to interfere into anything. I'm going to pull back and I'm only going to be busy with myself to worship. What did Holy Prophet say? What's going to happen in the Ahir Zaman? How, what did he say to warn us about what's going to happen? He says, there will come a time when tyranny is going to be everywhere. <coughs> huh? And this happened as an experience to our shaykh. 
He says, you cannot do anything. He's saying, you cannot do anything. Yes, you cannot even fight them. He says, that they're going to come to your house. He says, you cannot fight them. He says, no. At that time, to know it is better to be a what? A martyr than a murderer. Who is showing us that? The Ahlul Bayt is showing us that. In the face of extreme tyranny like that, it is better to be a shahid than a murderer. Then your life is not a tragedy. It is success. Because what is this world? What did they win? What did Yazid win? Nothing. He lost dunya, he lost ahirat. Those ones who are supporting him, what did they win? Nothing. They lost so much. Those ones who betray Hazrat Hussein, what did they win? Nothing. Because when they left, when they betrayed him, and when they left, Hazrat Hussein did not say, okay, if you leave, I'm going to hunt you down. I'm going to pray to my Lord, make sure that you are punished. Did he say that? No, he didn't. He said, I already forgave you. He says, I know where your hearts are. In a night like this, he says, you're too ashamed now to walk away from me right now. He said, no, we will never walk away from you, Yahoo Hussein. We'll die for you, we'll sacrifice you. I, I know, but tonight is very dark. There's no moon. You may go. And I'm not going to complain about you to my Lord now or on Judgment Day. Oh, that is our role model. Then, from that kind of strength and that kind of belief, we can take and it doesn't make our lives to be tragic. When we live and we die for the sake of Allah, we gain nothing from this world, and the Dajjals and the Tyrants, they come and kill us, it doesn't make our lives a tragedy. We are not tragic characters. We win. You understand? So, there is a destiny. If we understand our destiny a little bit, then we're going to say, we're going to walk this way. This is for us. Not this, not this, not this, not this. This is our way. We're going to be busy with that, and we don't care what the whole world says. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of our destiny. Not this world, not your father, not your mother, not this system. Allah is the creator of your destiny. <coughs> May Allah forgive us, inshallah. Don't ask to be tested like that. We're not asking to be tested. We will fail. We will fail. Like yesterday, I was getting a little bit upset because people were not taking. Yesterday is the actual day, the actual night. They're not taking serious like that. I said, then how are you going to fight against the Dajjal? What are we here for? To fight against the Dajjal and to fight against the tyrants when we cannot even sacrifice nothing. Hmm. You think those ones who sacrifice, they lose anything? They don't lose anything. They win everything. And they sacrificed. Hmm. May Allah forgive me, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.